In this video, I am talking about something that may be more potentially damaging to the game than Red Stars. We're going to talk about the history and what it could mean. Let's go smash it. Hey, what's up all you Valley Maniacs? Valley Fine here. I am back. Welcome to the channel. And crazy day yesterday. Overwhelmingly positive response to the content creators video that we put out against the Red Stars. And I thank you guys for that. And I'm crossing my fingers that it does have some impact to make this game better for all of us. And hopefully they will do something with the Red Stars. I, I'm not very confident. Because they doubled down on this, they've added an extra red star or blitz. And it's also been data mined that they're adding some more uh, red star things to the calendar as well. So, uh, not, not expecting something too big, but we will see what happens. Regardless, the aftermath of that brought this article to my attention. Fox next to join Disney after 71.3 billion fox deal approved by shareholders this was from july 30th of 2018 earlier this year now why did i not notice this till now well something else was going on back then it was a influencer rocketing to the top of the leaderboards with company help and many people weren't happy including myself it was a it was a interesting time, maybe the lowest time till this Red Stars came out in the game, at least in my opinion it was, and it, it was just a bad situation all around. And if you're not familiar with it, basically, uh, this person right here that I can't name on the channel because we've renamed that person Dirty Sanchez. The live stream actually renamed him, but he was getting some help from Fox Next to improve on his rankings. And then uh, he said he wished he was, uh, basically he said it was a little more sneaky so he wouldn't get caught and hasn't really made a video since. But anyway, back to this article from gamesindustry.biz. All right, bottom of it. It will also take control of Fox Next a, a game-focused division that launched in January 2017, which has grown through a series of acquisitions since the time. However, what the future for Fox Next, what the future holds for Fox Next, is far from certain. As Disney backed away from creating and publishing games in May of 2016, and I've done some research, and as far as I can tell, Fox Next is the only gaming studio that they own, which, which is a little scary for me uh, as someone that is a fan of this game because Disney does not have a good reputation in handling its games. Let's go to this uh, Business Insider article. This is from May of 2016. We were just talking about what happened back then and what happened is they shut down their gaming industry. They stopped producing games. They're just licensing it all out. Disney stopped making games because it does not understand how to make games is the headline of that. And this is Business Insider. This is not some gaming magazine. This is a business magazine saying this. All right, let me scroll down and read you some quotes from Disney CEO Bob Iger. We feel like we're better off managing the risk that the business delivers by licensing instead of publishing. And as far as I'm aware, them owning Fox Next um, and having Fox Next um, run this game is uh, there. It's kind of defining as publishing, correct? Um, he said that in an investor call and in plain English, video games are financially risky and it's easier to let other companies pay us for the right to make video games based on our properties than to make our own. And that is true. If you're just collecting royalties instead of actually producing content, much, much easier. All right. And this article agrees. Iger's not wrong. Like so many virtual battlefields, the video game landscape is littered with corpses of dead studios and publishers. Disney would know. It purchased and subsequently shut down a whole mess of these game studios itself. Here is a short list. Junction Point Studios, Propaganda Games, Black Rock Studios, LucasArts. We're going to talk about them in a little bit. Wide Load Games, Avalanche Software, which was making the popular Disney Infinity Games. Popular at the time, not existing anymore because they got shut down. 
All right, between 2005 and 2016, Disney bought half a dozen game studios and then closed them all. It was part of a bigger push into video games. It pushed that Disney never fully got behind, which resulted in half a dozen studios with hundreds of employees being closed. Interesting stuff. And, and, and this, this article scared me a little. Got to be honest. All right, so let's, uh, let's fast forward a little to that LucasArts shutdown, which happened in 2013. This article is from April 3rd, 2013, and this is from Kotaku. All right. Uh, interesting thing here is that this game was shut down in 2013. It purchased Lucas in uh, the Lucas brand in 2012. About a year after Lucas Arts, the video game division, no longer around. Um, they, had, they had a bunch of games too. They lasted for a while on their own until Disney purchased them. So again, the, the his Disney's history with video gaming studios is not so good. All right, let's fast forward. This is a Polygon article. And this describes, uh, this is all about Disney's history in the video gaming market. They had a studio called Interactive at one point. Uh, uh, not a studio, but that, that was the name of their division. Uh, right here. So. This was, uh, they're talking about the history all the way up to uh, 2016. But in 1992, the scribes, he met with Microsoft. Yeah, and they're talking about Mark Terran, uh, who came in as a director of business development for consumer products. All right. He met with Microsoft, EA, Westwood, and every major software developer at this point in time. He says to open up talks about licensing out Disney's entire software business instead of doing internal development or publishing, Disney wanted to wash its hands and just license its IP catalog. Very similar to what happened many years later in 2016. They said, we don't want to develop anymore. We want to just license out. All right. Let's move on to uh, CNBC. Why Disney unexpectedly, unexpectedly quit video game publishing. And this was... Uh, Shutting down one of their hugely popular games, Disney Infinity. It was a interesting article. Okay, another quote from Bob Iger. That business is a changing business, and we did not have enough confidence in the business in terms of it being stable enough to stay in it from a self-publishing perspective. Interesting. We know that we knew that going in that there would be a lot of risk with this product. And the fact that we did so well initially gave us the confidence to continue with it. The truth of the matter is that the risk that we cited at the beginning, when we went into this caught up with us. So their stance back in 2016, I don't know if this, their stance has changed and they're going to keep Fox next around or if they still have this stance. But if they did, it would explain some of the things that's been going on in the game since July. Uh, this, in my opinion, this game has had issues. But it, it was right around the Ant-Man and Wasp release, which was a little before July. But it was around then that uh, the community started getting a little negative. And right at July, especially when that influencer came out, uh, that's, that's when a lot of the negative press and negative publicity and more of the community started uh getting upset all right so what else happened in 2016 well a game that i was playing marvel's avengers alliance 2 as well as part one which was on facebook both got shut down wanted to wash their hands with it they had uh, play dom studios and wasn't good enough and and Honestly, I was playing Marvel's Avengers Alliance 2. It's a very good game. Excellent for theory crafting. The kind of game I like. But within a couple months, I was pretty much at end game content and had not spent a lot of money. Maybe 20 bucks or so. Uh, there just wasn't a lot of stuff to buy with them. So th one of the reasons they closed it down was because it was not uh, doing well. Their, their statement at the time. 
For more than four years, Marvel's Avengers Alliance has won, uh, has been one of DCPI's most successful games created for Facebook. And our hope was to continue that series was Marvel's Avengers Alliance 2. But that title has not met our performance expectations. As a result, we have decided to focus our efforts on new game experiences. So the reason that they're citing for the shutdown was that it was not performing. Which will be relevant to one of the theories that I have at the end. Alright, another article from the time. This one is from VentureBeat. And it was from two, uh, September 5th, 2016, right around the time that Marvel's Avengers Alliance and Avengers Alliance Part 2 got shut down. Alright, so, quote here. Disney Interactive also shut down its Disney Infinity toy game hybrid products in May. In both cases, Disney has shown no appetite for running games that were performing below expectations. So, Disney Infinity was a very popular game at the time. But I guess it didn't meet what Disney wanted it to do. They shut it down. Same thing with the Marvel's Avengers Alliance uh, games. So, fast forward from 2016 to end of 2016. Let's go into 2017. This is when Fox Next was created. This is an article from January 19th, 2017. Fox is launching Fox Next. Um, not, not too much here about the games. I don't, I'm not even sure if they had the Marvel IP at that point. Uh, and later that year, Fox acquires, this is from June of 2017, June 6, 2017, GameIndustry.biz, Fox acquires Kaba former Kabam Studio Aftershock. Uh, why is this relevant? Well, Aftershock's expertise had helped Kabam grow franchises like Marvel Contest of Champions, which has a lot of similar elements in this game as well. Now, we fast forward to 2017, later that year, here is a Kotaku article about a popular game getting shut down. This is a Disney game. Disney, after a couple months, Disney pulled its licensing. This is from November 22nd, 2017 from Kotaku again. Marvel Heroes developer Gazillion apparently lays off everyone on Thanksgiving Eve. Now, this is Gazillion that's laying off everyone, but um, it is it is caused by Disney pulling its license. Uh, and even though Disney did not directly lay off everybody on Christmas Eve, uh, they are responsible for it because it's their decision to pull the intellectual property that caused this. And the reports are that uh, the, the entire staff was let go, but... That they were let go without severance or PTO, which kind of sucks for these those guys as well. Not not Disney doing it directly, but again, it, their decision to pull the intellectual property from Gazillion led to this. Then later that year, because at this point Fox Next is still owned by Fox, they're licensing out the IP from Disney. But boom, here's an article from the LA Times describing. Disney buys much of Rupert Murdoch's 21st Century Fox deal. Fox in a deal that will reshape Hollywood. This is December 14th, 2017. Marvel Strike Force was already in beta at this time. People were playing it. And I think they had some good things planned. I think the framework of the game, because of what they've done at this point, before this happened, uh, is, is what's causing it success now. Because... Things, things changed a little um, from when I first started playing it. Um, one, one of the complaints I actually had was there was nothing to buy. There was, uh, there was, there was a lot of similarities between Marvel's Avengers Alliance with Part 2 with nothing to buy and, and Marvel's Strike Force. There was nothing to buy. There was nothing to spend our money on for probably a month or so into the game. And I was worried that it would end up like Marvel's Avengers Alliance 2. But uh, they have way shifted that. In just a few months that this game's been around. And that led to this Polygon article right here. Now, this is in August of this year. So, this is about a month after Disney took over. So, this is about a month after that article. And the article states, this is from April 24, 2018. Marvel Strike Force's microtransactions go beyond the mobile standard. The game's community is furious over the recent events and rewards. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about some theories for why this happened in a little bit, but uh, basically this was about this thing right here. This limited time offer for some trash Kree minions. Not even enough stars to unlock Nick Fury. Ninety-nine dollars. Just, just, just enough to unlock these characters if you've never farmed them, so you can start farming. Uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. This is when Kraken quit. This is when Seaton quit the first time. Um, Nick Fury wasn't, 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 uh, wasn't feeling it at that time for a lot of players. And then they actually started turning it around. How Fox next is pulling off a mobile mea couple with Marvel Strike Force. The mobile RPG made a remarkable turnaround. And I got to admit, at this point, I was, this was in October 9th, 2018. So about two months ago or so, I thought the game was in a good place. The community was generally happy. Uh, Amir, the executive producer of Fox next, tells us that heat was deserved. Let me read his quote from back then. A lot of that community sentiment was deserved on our part. We were making changes that were a little tone deaf and blind to the perspectives of players. It's a shame that it had to get to the point for us to open our eyes to the community and how to empathize with them. It did get there and it did force us to re-examine how we got there and how we think of the community. I don't know what's changed since then, but most of the community is not in favor of these red stars and uh, same same things seem to be happening. Getting a little tone deaf and making sh changes that are not in the and uh, not very good in the perspectives of the players. Another Polygon article. Boom. This is about the red stars. December tenth, a few days ago. Marvel Strike Force latest update is pay to win mobile gaming at its worst. And this is all about these this gambling mechanics and the red stars and not being able to progress without extreme RNG. Not good. And what is the result of that? Well, let's go look at the, uh, the revenue chart. And this is the revenue charts from today, December 14th. And it's, this is just iOS. And right now, Marvel Strike Force is at 31. $71,000 day, 13,000 new installs. So they're doing pretty good, which is which is why it's uh it, it does I'm not sure what is going to happen with the red stars when it's making them so much money but everybody's unhappy. And it, it's kind of like they're sacrificing their long-term reputation and long-term prospects for this short-term thinking to try to maximize the profits right now. What else? Google Play. Let's look at Google Play. Now, we don't have a numbers for here because I'm not subscribed to this site. But Marvel Strike Force, they are all the way up at number 23. So they're doing well. So what does all this mean? January, Disney acquires Fox Next in part of that big Fox deal. And since then, there, there's been you know all these cash grabs. The, the infamous Cree Orb offer. Level 70 coming, just things feeling rushed. Got to move, move, move in this game. And I guess that's the point of the game, to try to make the most money and to try to uh, maximize their profits, as any business should do. But let, let me put this back up here. All right. But it, it's, it seems to be coming at the goodwill and happiness of the community. Which is not good. Uh, and that leads me to four different scenarios that could be in play here. Three of them, not, not the best, but not that bad. And then the fourth scenario is just not good. All right, so let's talk about these scenarios. Scenario number one. Disney says, Fox next, you guys are doing your thing. Uh, and Fox next just wants to make a lot of money. That's why they're doing this. They're trying to uh, get a lot of money. Uh, and, and that scenario is very possible. But it's not the worst scenario because in the past, Fox Next has shown that they've backtracked on some of their uh, bonehead decisions that aren't very friendly to the player base. Very friendly to the wallets of Fox Next, but not very friendly to 
uh, the player base. And they've they backtracked on a few of them. So if that is the case, Disney is not involved, then uh, not the worst thing. Scenario number two, also very possible. Disney is telling Fox Next, you guys better make some money. You guys better make at least X amount of money or we are going to shut you down. Just like LucasArts. Just like Play Dumb. Just like some of these other games that they've shut down. And all these other studios that they've shut down as well. They've, they've shown that they buy studios and uh, shut them down when they're not profiting. So uh, Fox Next is giving all these offers because they're being forced by Disney to do all of these offers. To show a profit. And they're showing a profit. These red orbs, uh, as much as everybody or the majority of the community does not like them, people are still spending money on them, buying them. So I don't know what's going to happen with this thing today, but uh, they're making money. So I don't know how they're, what what incentive they would have to backtrack on uh, what they've done with the red orbs, especially because it is a business and they're trying to make money and they're making money from it. They're they're rising up these iPhone and uh, Google Play charts, at least since the last time I've looked at it, um, which, which has been a while. But they're rising. They've risen up the charts since uh, these uh, blatant cash grab attempts. All right, so if that is the scenario, then um, you know we're we're more in for this cash grabbiness of this game. Um, you got cash grab elements from Contest of Champions and as well as uh, Galaxy of Heroes in this game, so it's like a combination of the two. Um, but that scenario is very possible. Now, scenario number three was mentioned to me a while back, and it is also very possible. They want their numbers to look good. Because they plan to sell this studio. Disney either plans to sell the, the, the entire studio or the game or uh, you know license this, uh, license this game out to another studio that uh, will take, o take it over. And I think this is also very possible. If you see this deep uh, progression of the way they've been doing offers and handling the releases of everybody in this game. I mean, Loki... Only available in a premium orb. Sabretooth only available in a premium orb. The word on the street is Carnage is only going to be available in a premium orb. Um, Got to get lucky. All based on gambling. And gambling does make a lot of money, which is the reason that Vegas is so successful. Which is why a lot of people buy lottery tickets. Because they have a chance. It's just uh, human nature. You risk a little bit of something to get something big, or you could get nothing out of it. And that is the... Third scenario, they are looking to sell this company. Disney is like, we just want to license IP. You buy this uh, studio and we will license this game out to you. This actually might be the best scenario because once they've sold that, um, obviously a company that buys it would still want to make money. But I don't know if they would be as... And this may not be the best case scenario depending on which studio would purchase it. But... Um, if they go to a better studio, maybe they won't be as cash grabby um, and are looking more for the long term prospects of the game instead of just an immediate cash grab. So um, if that happens, um, it could be good, could not be good. We will see if, if that is a scenario that happens. It is possible that they're looking for that. Um, could be good, could be bad. And then the last possibility. That came to my mind, and this is probably the worst case scenario, is that Disney says they don't want to be in the publishing business. They don't want to be releasing games. They want to be licensing games out and says, Fox Next, you guys have made money. Uh, we're going to shut this thing down. Let's just try to milk the players for as much money as possible before we shut you guys down. And that's also a possibility. I don't know if it's likely, but it, it is a possibility based on... Disney's track record and video game studios and video games. Just shutting them down abruptly or shutting them down because they're not profitable enough. Now, this game has shown to be profitable, so I don't know if they will just shut it down. But if, if their profits start to falter a little, could not be good. So I hope, I hope some things change. Who knows what will happen except for the executives at... Fox Next, 
and Disney themselves, but I don't think they will ever make that information public. Uh, maybe way down the road, but I don't think that anytime soon that that information will be public. So we will just have to wait and see what the end game is here. Which leads me to my question of the day. What is the end game here for Fox next for Disney? What is going to happen with this game? Is it going to go by the way of Marvel's Avengers Alliance 2 and Marvel's Heroes Omega and many of the other games that got shut down? That, that players generally liked. You know, maybe not made as much money. So that stuff could have been handled a little better. But uh, players generally liked those games. Will this game end up like that? Or is Disney getting back into the studio business? We'll have to see. You let me know in the comments down below what you think. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel. Smash on that like button and join the notification squad. Click on that bell. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and I'm on Discord. There is some Valley Flying merch in the description down below if you want to uh, get some cool merchandise. And I will see you next time. I got one question for you, though. What you gonna do, brother? When Valley Flying and all the Valley Minions come down on YouTube? Valley Flying, out.